Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Napoleon Total, and today we are back with another Enlisted video. Today we are doing Enlisted Squad History Part 2 of 3 sections. It's part 2 because there are there is the premium section, the part 1 which is of all the units, and now we have part 2. Once again, for those that are wanting to learn about more history and um, to make this video even more um, self-explanatory, I highly suggest that you watch part 1 and the premium squad uh, history. But that said, without further ado, I will tell you the fact that um, most of this stuff is not about the regiment or the squad, but about the division. So without anything else, let's start the video. Next, we have the 120th Re Reconnaissance Battalion of the 111th Infantry Division. The division was formed in December of 1940 from elements of the 34th Infantry Division, the 33rd Infantry Division, as part of the 12th wave of German mobilization. The 112th was remained as OKH reserve during the opening phases of Operation Barbarossa, OKH being German High Command, and it was only committed to the southern wing of the second half of July during the Battle of Smolensk. Here elements of the Soviet 21st Army has pushed through German uh, elements and advanced up to 80 kilometers in the German rear. At the beginning of August, the 112th was manning defensive positions on Army Group Center's 7th flank as part of the 2nd Army's um, 7th Corps. As Guderian's 2nd Panzer start started to wheel from Schmelens to the south on the 8th of August, the 2nd er, Army on his flank was slow to join, but because of poor weather, arm, uh, ammunition shortages, and a hesitancy of General Bikes, its Army commander, um, which caused the delay. On the 12th of August, the 12th, the Second Army finally launched its attack on the east of Brosk, which, remember, at this point, the 112th was part of the Second Army. It broke through the defenses of the Soviet 21st Army, and in three days of fighting, encircled the bulk of the Soviet 63rd Rifle Corps at the Parkevich Balayant. Lacking in mobile units, the 112th was still part of the 7th Army Corps, formed the eastern pincer of the attack, breaking through successful defensive lines, eventually linking up with the 267th Infantry Division, coming from the other way of the villages of Lotosk and the uh, Stalovka Railway on the Zolkin uh, Shkobeben Gomel Rail Line, switching a thin barrier to, to, across the Soviet Corps as an escape route. The 112 spent the next three days fending off retreating and increasingly desperate escape attempts. By the 20th uh, um, August, um, General Fly's 1st Cavalry Division has captured Gomel and the 2nd trail is a compliment, totaling 7,800 7, uh, 78,000 prisoners, 700 guns, 144 tanks, and many of these in the Shobin pocket. By the tail's end of October, the encirclement battles of around Bryansk was over. 112 crossed the Oka River, uh, south of Brezhnev, inching its way towards, uh, slowly towards the mud. Following the advances were breaking down due to deteriorating roads and supply difficulties, the southern uh, eastern flank of the 2nd Panzer Group was a problem. Therefore, General um, De Panzer Guderian shifted the 112 as part of uh, 53rd Corps to his right to shore up the protection there. The division was deployed along the region of Tola, which met Soviet 13th Army near Tapayai, who were attempting to drive on Tola from the east to disrupt German army thrust towards Moscow. The Germans used their superior mo mobility of their cavalry units to delay um, 53rd Corps' mission so that the, the Guderian had to reinforce it with tanks, artillery, and flank and flat guns. A move which slowed down the whole advance of, arm of the Panzer Group. With the aid of reinforcements, the 112th Infantry Division drove the 13th Army off the east to advance for Stalingrad, where it was attacked by newly arrived Siberian 239th uh, Rifle Division. Supported by tanks and severe, uh, and severe reverse, and showed signs of, and which the 112th showed signs of panic. Unprepared for winter conditions, each infantry division has lost already 500 men to frostbite, and in the severe cold, the machine guns failed to operate. The division was now very weak and unable to advance further. On the 2nd of November, the division was disbanded. The remaining infantry uh, units were obligated and formed into the 112th Divisional Group. It's basically a regimental equivalent, and along with support elements, this, um, this division was 
used to build Core Detachment B. Any information after this point is really much unknown. And that, that's, that does it for 120 Reconnaissance Battalion of the 112th Infantry Division. Next we have the first group of Stugwitz Kanspitzkudwada 77. Once again, I'm just going to be referring to whatever that name was to STG. Obviously, my German sucks, so I'm not going to say anything about the word again. It was formed on September 1939. These uh, STG units were made up of JU-87 Stukas, which formed into four complete battle wings. One of them is STG-77. The other two existed, but with only a single group. STG-3, uh, sorry, STG-77 was a full um, group was a full uh, STG. First STG 77 was formed from first STG 51 at Krungsten in the 14th of May 1939. On 31st of August 1939, the eve of war, it only possessed 39 uh, JU 87s, of which 34 were combat ready. On the 1st of September, many of the crews of STG 77 flew four or five combat missions in that single day. With the assistance from STG-2 and KG-77, the first group assisted in the destruction of the Lodi Army Cavalry Brigade. These attacks provided air support to the mechanized 16th Corps. This was obviously still in the first few days of the invasion of Poland. The entire wing was involved in the offensive counter-air raids against enemy airfields. On the 4th of September, STG-77 was used against rail and road traffic in support of the 4th Army. The attacks were so successful that there was a shortage of targets. On the 6th of September, STG, the first group of STG-77 hit targets in Warsaw area for the first time. STG-77 was also used in the siege of Warsaw. STG-77 then returned to Brine after the Polish surrender on the 6th of October 1939. It was a powerful close support force and it was now used to support Army Group A's breakout from the Ardennes and to advance of the English Channel. It was also to support Army Group B in Belgium and France. Some of no well in France and the Low Countries, some of the no notable achievements include supporting the paratroopers at Ibn Amil um, during the Battle of Fort Ibn Amil, which the German paratroops were able to take. At on the 13th of May, uh, the Battle of Sedan, SDG aircrew aircrew threw around 360 attacks against French army positions, which the dive bombers uh, attacked. Um, French artillery positions, which were particularly effective. At CG 77. Achievements also included the pulverization of Charles de Gaulle 4 E Division Crassier on the 19th of May on the Battle of the Marcanot. The fragment bombs were particularly devastating, blowing off tank tracks. However, the losses to the uh, division itself, the, the 4 E Division Crassier, was unknown, but it was definitely mauled. It was it. Uh, another achievement was the attack on the Marville airfield, which was subject to attack by Group One Two of STG-77 on the 22nd of May. It also destroyed the French destroyer Orange, and which was crippled by the first group of STG-77, which the destroyer, the French destroyer Orange, has to, had to be scuttled. STG-77 also supported the siege on Calais, which the town was actually reduced to rubble. It then supported bombing operations in Dunkirk after the fall of Calais, uh, leading to the Battle of Dunkirk, which JU-87s uh, JU from SDG-77 bombarded Allied shipping, uh, which were used to evacuate the French and British armies. Uh, even more damage was, was done after Dunkirk, um, after Dunkirk against the French, but all operations ended for SDG-77 in France after the, the French signed the armistice. Then SDG, all of that was in over all, all the achievements in France, just in France alone. SDG, SDG 77, first group, were then moved to Shyborg to commence operations against, Luf, uh, against the United Kingdom. At first, the SDG 77 participated in the Battle of Berlin, trying to disrupt our, um, um, trying to destroy Allied convoys. By the, by the 9th of July 1940, the Germans were attacking convoys in force, which obviously SDG 77 was a part of, and it did sink a lot of convoys. On the August of 13, um, Operation. Um, the Germans launched, launched the offensive to destroy Allied Fighter Command, which was um, which it did receive a multitude of damage. 
However, there was a fact that RAF Fighter Command was as well as prepared. It's an STG-77 along with other German aircraft were losing aircraft at a terrifying rate, and the price was just too high for um, these for that, and therefore STG-77 was pulled out from bombing of RAF Fighter Command and was sent to attacks for um, to make some attacks on the convoys. Note: It is some attacks and not all attacks. Later that year, um, the Ju 87s of STG-77 played no further part in the Battle of uh, Britain. STG-77 was then designated to Luftwaffe Flotilla 4, which participated in the invasion of Yugoslavia and Greece. Like in France, it did a terrifying amount of damage on both Yugoslavia and Greece. Just in Crete alone, third group of STG-77 claimed 46,000 tons of shipping, of which 86,000 tons were damaged. After the op after the Crete operation, STG-77 returned to Poland on the June on the 22nd of June 1941 of uh, the invasion uh, the invasion of the Soviet Union Operation Barbarossa. STG-77's first mission was to support the crossing of the Bog River and the bridge of the demarcation line founded by the Soviet uh, Nazi Soviet powers in 1939. This support helped the 17th and 18th Panzer Divisions make the crossing. STG-77 then supported German forces in the in the Battle of Bialystok Minsk, which will support the 11th Army as it advanced across the Romanian Soviet border. By the 5th of July, STG-77 has destroyed 18, 18 trains, 500 vehicles. STG-77 then attacked Soviet supply lines um, at the Battle of Ulan. STG-77 also contributed heavily to the Battle of Kiev. It would bomb Timoshenko's headquarters at Kiev. It, may, it, um, it would make an effort to destroy Soviet 26th Army and to encircle it by, by any means to bomb, to bomb the Karnev bridges across the Dnieper. These attacks were, for the first time would fail, and the bridges will only fall when the Soviet's rearguard blew it up. Um, at Kiev, um, STG-77 would claim 920 vehicles, and on September 6th, um, the 6th Army would renew its offensive against Kiev. STG-77 uh, STG will fly 4 to 6 sorties per day in support, bombing artillery placements, bunkers, and cit citadel positions until the city was captured. For the south, the 2nd group of STG-77 supported the 17th Army in the capture of Poltava on the 18th of September. It would also see action against the Soviet Black Fleet. Black Black Sea Fleet, inflicting a good deal of casualties. STG-77 then fought in the early stages of the Battle of Moscow until the 23rd of October 1941. It was withdrawn because it was foreseen, it was it was believed that the battle at the Battle of Moscow would come to be known as a German victory, and since the Battle of Moscow was for foreseen to be uh, imminent um, as a German victory, STG-77 was then moved to the 11th. Uh, army pushing through to Crimea. Obviously, as we all know by now, the Battle of Moscow would end in a uh, German defeat. On the tw 24th of October, the Crimean front collapsed and, f and, the and the Soviets fell back to Sevastopol, beginning the siege, where the fighting would bog down. SDG-77 would be then be instrumental in the First Battle of Kharkov, destroying Soviet counterattacks from the southwestern front and allowing army groups south to seize the cities despite snowfall. In November, after a skillful Soviet offensive, it had rejected Soviet force, as it has rejected German forces from the Battle of Rostov from the city. STG-77 covered the German retreat to the Meuse River. Reconnaissance discovered another build-up to another offensive in which STG responded by destroying 70 trucks, followed by some more other vehicles, plus 8 tanks, 1 artillery battery in just in one day. From the 22nd of June to 22nd of November 1941, STG-77 would claim a destruction of 240 motor vehicles, 234 tanks, 92 artillery batteries, 21 trains, for only 25 Stuka JU-87s. 2nd STG-77 would share 140 tanks, 445 artillery pieces, and another 443 anti-aircraft emplacements. Obviously, STG-1 would do somewhat better. In the winter of 1941 to 1942, um, well, actually, no. Um, 
There was, there, actually, no, there's even more to the list. Oh my, oh my god. Uh, SDG-77, the, seven, the second group of SDG-77, will not only kill 140 tanks, 45 artillery pieces, 43 anti-tank guns, and in, in addition, it will uh, sink 10 ships of the Soviet Black Sea Fleet. Over the winter of 1941 to 1942, SDG-77 remained in the south. SDG-77 was, was to support German's 11th Army in the conquest of Crimea. SDG-77 will do so in the way that it always did, which was bomb the heck out of everyone. Uh, when the Soviets launched their surprise offensive near Kharkov, again, SDG-77 would be rushed south to destroy and prevent a breakthrough. The entire wing was present within 43, 48 hours, and in the first two days, SDG-77 would claim 40, 54 tanks destroyed. As the Soviet, as the German offensive, uh, counter, as the German forces counterattack, SDG-77 destroyed five of the main bridges across the Donetsk and damaged another fourth to prevent Soviet forces from retreating. After Kharkov, Kharkov, um, the SDG-77 was sent back to Crimea to commit to be committed against Sevastopol once again from the from the first of June. Oil, electricity. Oil, electricity, water pumps, harbor facilities, and submarine bases were attacked by STG 77's uh, Stuka Ju 87s. The targets were so badly damaged that fires broke out all over the city and the port city. The city was eventually captured on 12th of July. From the 2nd of June to the 3rd of July of 1942, STG 77 has flown 7,000 combat sorties, dropped three, um, three, 305,000 tons of bombs. And of during this entire time, they've only lost 23 aircraft. STG-77 was then sent for the German summer offensive in 1942. This time it was Operation Case Blue, with the goal of taking the oil-rich Caucasus. The first group, <coughs> STG-77, will once again inflict serious damage and serious and heavy damage against Soviet infantry, tanks, and vehicles. By this time, it has reported its 30,000th mission. On the 24th of July, the first group of SDG-77 rendered invaluable support to the 52nd Panzer Corps, allowing the Germans to seize, seize the bridges onto the city of Rostov. First group then supported the attacks on Stalingrad on August the 23rd, 1942nd. It, this is definitely, guys, not a, a foreshadow to um, <clears throat> our next campaign, which is <clears throat> Stalingrad. By the 26th of September, it was withdrawn Straffle at the time to Bresnel to rest and re-equip. It returned to the prominent in support of the Alex um, forces at the Battle of Stalingrad. In addition to providing close air support, it attacks small vessels reinforcing Soviet forces in the city on the Volga River. <clears throat> Both ferry barges were strafed and bombed virtually every day from first light to dusk. By 20th of September, it had 20 Operation Ju-87s uh, from um, from Second Group of STG-77. It fought at the Battle of Rajev and advanced down. The the Don River. It then if went back to the Stalingrad area to fly more operations in the Stalingrad area. Then it will move southwest to Kharkov on the 3rd of October to support the 1st Panzer Army and the 7th Arm 17th Army to consolidate German gains in North Caucasus against the growing opposition. And then after, um, and then the Soviets will launch Operation Uranus, which was to encircle the entire 6th Army at Stalingrad. SCG-77 will, uh, will, fa will fail to prevent the success of Operation Uranus. SCG-77 uh, also would fail to provide uh, relief support for, uh, uh, for the attacking force in Operation Winter Storm, which was the German relief of was actually was the German attempt to relieve the Sixth Army. The attack will fail, and it will result in heavy losses. That said, the wing would still achieve some success, recovering the retreat from the Caucasus after the Ger after the Soviet Operation Little Saturn. At that point, SDG-77 would sever, start to suffer heavy losses. As a matter of fact, SDG-77 was decimated and had to be withdrawn to Würzburg, and then moved to Kagari in, well, in, in the Mediterranean, but was not used until the Allied invasion of Sicily, Operation Husky. When Operation Husky finally commenced, the airfields were so badly damaged on the island that it was forced to return to the Eastern Front. In summer of 1943, SDG-77 was uh, was assigned to support the 2nd Panzer, 2nd SS Panzer Corps on the southern sector of the front line around Kursk. When the Battle of Kursk began on the 5th of July, the wing supported the 4th Panzer Army and, immediate be and immediately began to suffer casualties. Just in the first day, SDG 
uh, 77 lose the 11 aircraft with the 11 more damage, so 22 aircraft. By all measures, at the Battle of Sebastopol, they will only lo lose 23. On the 8th of July, and this was lost in a single day, SDG-77 supported the Grosse Deutschland against the fortified village of Starajenvo. The, uh, the, the our Air Corps can play, can claim with contribution of other groups, 84 Soviet tanks destroyed, 21 damage, 40 vehicles destroyed, 5 artillery pieces along with 2 anti-aircraft guns and 2 rocket launchers, aka Katushas. By the end, by the evening of the 8th of July, 16 dive bombers have been lost. The Germans halted the amount of Stuka shorties over the ensuing days. On the 12th of July, SDG-77 was involved in the Battle of Pokorovka, while the, um, while the JU-87s of SDG-77 would fly only 150 sorties in support, the attack was such a great success because the Soviet armors were advancing in the open. The Soviet 31st Tank Brigade of the 29th Tank Corps suffered heavy casualties. As a matter of fact, 36th Tank Brigade's commander was wounded by aircraft when his tank was destroyed. However, at this point onward, SDG-77 will suffer even heavier casualties. After Kursk in mid-October, it it engaged in the Battle of the Dnieper, attacking the Soviet spearheads east of Kiev. First group also mirrored these actions. It was the last in action against the bridges over the Dnieper to prevent the Soviet forces crossing. On 18th of October 1943, the, the unit was disbanded. Why? Because most members were going to uh, Stratzwe Gaswada 77. And also because SDG-77 at this point will suffer so many heavy casualties that it need to be disbanded. That said, most of these units were uh, sent to um, another group, which also, which I, which I just stated. Although I'm not going to try to pronounce German again, uh, it's also called SDG, uh, S, S E G 77. This time, it will be armed with not only uh, Ju 87 Stukas but also Focke Wolf 190s. It will serve until the end of the war against both Soviet and American forces. So that's a whole lot of history from, um. SDG-77. Also, it's a little bit of foreshadowing, <coughs> just a <coughs> just a little bit of foreshadowing for our next campaign, which is, um, how do I put it in a nice way, um, let's just say 99.999% sure that it's gonna be Stalingrad. But yes, that's it for STG 77 It was essentially everywhere all across the front in the Eastern Front. And so yeah, that's that. After SCG-77, we have the 185th Infantry Regiment of the 87th Infantry Division. The division was set up during the mobilization of August 26, 1939 as part of the second draft in Alban, in Military District 4. After the installation was complete, it was relocated to the Alpha for border security. As part of the Western Campaign, the advance route to southern Belgium to the Somme and were involved in the second phase for the Battle of Paris, which they remained as a temp temporary occupying force. In the spring of 1941, the division was transferred to East Prussia and assigned to the 9th Army for the attack of the Soviet Union. She was involved in the Battle of Bielostok. A little later, she was deployed north to the Battle of Smolensk. In August of 1941, major operations broke between in the winter of 1941. The division marched as part of Operation Typhoon via Vyazma, Grashnak, Moskaya, and Rusa and Zonigrad. Before, to before Moscow had to, and then to Moscow before it had to retreat back to the Russian area. The year of 1944, it remained. Oh, sorry. The year of 1942, it remained on the it remained for the division by the costly defensive battles on the front via Rzhev. In spring of 1943, she left the Rzhev front. In early of 1944, the division was then assigned to the 16th Army on the southern wing of Army Group North. As a result. Soviet summer offensive in 1944, the division had to retreat to Cortland via the Dorpla, where the entire army group, uh, the entire army group, the Cortland army group, was surrounded, and followed by a participation of the six Cortland battles until the capitulation in May of 1945, of which the 87th Infantry Division was a part of. Once again, we don't have much information for the Battle of Moscow, nor do we have much information after that point, which is rare. Um, there's not a lot of information from 1942 to 1945, except for the fact that she was in the Cortland pocket. But that is it for the 87th Infantry Division. Next, we have the 3rd Communication Battalion of the 3rd Infantry Division. 
The 3rd Infantry Division was the German Infantry Division that fought in World War II, obviously. <laughs> the division was established under the cover name of Retta Graten in Frankfurt in 1934 by the expanding 3rd Division of the Reichswehr. It was, was redesignated as Commandant von uh, Frankfurt shortly after it until the formation of the Wehrmacht was announced in October of 1935. In March of 1939, the division took part in the invasion and occupation of Czechoslovakia. Um, during World War II, the division took part in the invasion of Poland in September of 1939, where it, it was part of the German 4th Army. <clears throat> it then took part of the invasion of France in May of 1940. In October, it returned to Germany and was fully upgraded to a motorized division. Note, most German divisions during this war had no transport for infantry and used forces to tow their artillery. German industry could not turn out sufficient motor transport, therefore a motorized division was fully was um, rare. It was redesignated as the 3rd Motorized Division, in which and then it took part in Operation Barbarossa in June of 1941, advancing on Leningrad under Army Group North. In October, the division was transferred to the 1st Group Army Group Center for Operation Typhoon at the bottom of Moscow and defensive battles in the region in, of the winter. In mid 1942, it was transferred to Army Group South to take part in the summer offense of Case Blue, which fall, or Fall of Lao, which was all ultimately cut, caught up in the Battle of Stalingrad, where it was destroyed in the encirclement with, along with the Sixth Army of February 1943. Once again, not a foreshadowing that we might just might get a Stalingrad campaign. <clears throat> It was then reconstituted as the 3rd Panzer Grenadier Division in March, absorbing the 360, uh, 386 motorized division in the process. It then fought on the Italian front until the summer of 1944. It was then transferred to the Western Front to re-establish the front line after the Allied breakout from the Normandy beachheads. A year later, it participated in the Battle of Bulge, and then it was and then in defensive actions at Rheinmaien, ultimately surrendering to in the Ruhr Pocket in April of 1945. Shortly before victory um, in Europe on Victory Day. Next, we have the 6th Anti Tank Battalion of the 6th Infantry Division. In the course of the rearmament of the Wehrmacht, the, the, uh, the divisional staff of the 6th Infantry Division was formed under code of Infanterie Führer 6 on October the 1st, 1934, in Blensfield, in Military District 6. And on October 15th, 1935, when it was officially renamed the 6th Infantry Division, when Germany decided, yeah, no, we're not going to follow the Treaty of Versailles. On In the Western Campaign of 1940, the division marched for Luxembourg, Belgium, to the Somme. It participated on, on the Battle of the Somme, where the division was uh, distinct, distinguished itself. It then advanced to Chon, in which Wehrmacht troops would cross the river by literally swimming across the river, and then, well, because mostly because the bridges were blown up, and then they will, uh, their engineers will then just build the bridges up. The divisions then pursued the enemy retreating forces across Uru, and then literally just just went everywhere in France. In 1941, during the attack on the Soviet Union, the, bro the division broke through the Soviet border fortification east of the Galapo, across the Mele and Paris. Uh, it advanced to the Dorna, and then Polsky, and then broke through the Stalin line, uh, which is around. Uh, behind Poland. After fighting on the Mejev, the division took part in the battles of Vyazma and Rostanya, conquering uh, Staniaka and pursuing the invasive Soviet troops via Rezhev, Stano, Progona, Staritsa, where the division attacked across the Volga to, uh, to the Zebo area on the Tuma, near Ebolkeno. In front of Moscow, the division had almost about 30 kilometer wide section, which they had to retreat before the Soviet counteroffensive began in December. After heavy losses in Ima, um, um, after heavy losses in Ima, in 1942, following defensive battles in the Rzhev area, and 1943, the, the infantry division fighting on the southern bank of the Volga was well as successful as clearing the front ledge of Rzhev, meaning that it was just able to defend. In which 12 German um, divisions escaped from the encirclement. It then participated once again into Operation Citadel. And the division was used as a rear guard, which took in the defensive battles near uh, Zhuelski on Donetsk and Zoko in the Zomel area on the, on the, the Dnieper. She then settled onto the Deshant and a lot of places which I cannot pronounce. 
In, uh, in 1944, defensive uh, retreat battles followed in the Zompgon area and the Dnieper across the across Ola. After the collapse of Armed Group Center during Operation Migration and the Soviet breakthrough um, on the roskov gashgon Road, the division was surrounded and destroyed in June of 1944. It was then officially dissolved in July of uh, July 18th, 1944, from the remnants. Yeah. From the remnants of the 552nd Infantry Division, the 6th um, Grenadier Division was reorganized on July of 25th, 1944, so the 6th Infantry Division became after it's, it was destroyed as the 6th Grenadier Division. And it was then renamed as the 6th Volks uh, Grenadier Division on October 9th, 1944, but it did not reach division strength. It was used as a combat division on the Vistula and was destroyed once again on January 12th, 1945 when the Volka Breachhead was sealed off. The remainder of the division was taken over by the 19th Panzer Division and withdrew to Silesia with, with Group Nuring. Without any leadership or from the Army or Army Group, so essentially what remained of the 6th Volksgrenadier Division was just had no officers, well not any high-ranking officers, and they had to retreat, retreat to Silesia. On the 10th of March 1945, the 6th Infantry Division was re-established again from the remnants of the 6th Volks Grenadier Division. She took part in the Battle of Luban, and then she was disbanded in May of 1945 after V-Day. But that's it, 46th Infantry Division. Next, we have the 364th Infantry Regiment of the 161st Infantry Division. The division was formed in December of 1939 as part of the 7th wave of German mobilization it, and used, and used uh, replacement battalions from uh, Military District 1, which was East Prussia, to form its combat units. In 1940, 161st took part in the short-lived attack on the Maginot Line on uh, the 21st of June. After a single day of the assault on the Maginot Line, with little achievement because it's the Maginot Line. The attack was called off by um, General Lieb as unnecessary. On the 22nd of June, the 1941, the 161st attacked the Soviet Union as part of the Army Group Center's 9th Army. After participating in the Great Encirclement at Mis Minsk, the 161 had to march hard to catch up with the fighting on the Eastern Front, eventually helping to relieve the mobile units of 3rd Panzer Group for other tasks. By mid-August, the division was part of the 9th Army Army's Eastern Front, uh, north of Smolensk. On 17th of August, the division was hit by a massive attack, a main co component of Tymoshenko's counteroffensive, which was to disrupt German offensive actions and recapturing lost ground in the Smolensk region. Virtually the entire Soviet 19th Army smacked upon the 161st, and its falling defenses were literally overrun by so four. Hear me out. The, the entire division was run overrun by four. Red Army Divisions, a tank division, and after one week of fighting, the division, the 161st, has lost 75% of its combat strength and much equipment. It had to be pulled out of the line to be replaced. So this, the luck for the 161st was quite bad. Uh, at this point, I think it's a good, I think it's a little bit too late, but at this point, I have to do say that um, German infantry divisions um, and Russian and Soviet infantry divisions are quite different. Uh, German infantry divisions are bigger, while Soviet infantry division is like um, a brigade strength. So yeah, there's a problem there. Um, at this point, uh, Soviet army is the same as a German division at this point. Just put it in that context. By the end of the year, um, this, the division has suffered, suffered a staggering 7,000 casualties since the Operation Barbarossa, including 251 I'm oh, sorry, two, 252 officer casualties, of which 1,702, uh, and those, and of, yeah, there's not a lot of remaining. Nevertheless, in spite of the losses, the division remained in the line, and in December of 1942, the division moved to, the division moved to the Rajev's front. On August of 1942, the division was once again a focus of the Soviet counteroffensive. Counter Speak about the luck. This time, Zhukov's main attempt was to eliminate the Rajev salient. In the morning of 4th of August uh, 31st, the Russian army surged into an attack the 161st in an 8-mile stretch east of Sabon. 
The breakthrough was complete, almost completed almost at once. By dark, the only trace of the former front was like essentially white flares that were sent up. Um, the remnants of the division were forced back into Zabrosk, and the situation for the Ninth Army was precarious and grim on the Rezhev uh, sector. It was, but however, because it's just, because since the situation was so grim, the 161st had to stay in the line as reinforcements were literally rushed into the area. The fighting continued on the second half of September and finally subsided. The depleted division was posted to France to rebuild in 1942. By December of 1941, uh, uh, by December, the 161st was located in the Pas de Calais area on the channel, uh, absor absorbing replacements. The German 161st Infantry Division, division then participated, participated um, back on the Eastern Front at the Battle of Kursk under the 42nd Army Corps. During the battle, the 161st was responsible for protecting the flank of the 3rd Panzer Group. In November of 1943, the remnant, remaining combat elements of the um, of division was incorporated to Corps Ausland A and the formation was essentially dissolved. So, 161st was no longer um, was no longer on the board. The division was reformed in July of 19 The division was then reformed in July of 1944 as an infantry division once again. It was on defensive of southern Ukraine and the Romanian border under 52nd Corps of 6th Army. Its second life, this is since this is the second time, only lasted a few weeks as on 20th of August, the Russian 2nd and 3rd Ukrainian fronts unleashed Jasky Nefyachyan offensive. I am, I am definitely butchering that. A major offensive into Romania. These forces blasted huge holes into the Axis front and within three days encircled most of the ill fated 6th Army. Literally, the 6th Army. Including the 161st uh, Division near Jansky, the entire encirclement was reduced within a few days and the entire German army, with all units in that pocket, were destroyed. The division was officially disbanded in October of 1944 and was never rebuilt. Um, yeah, honestly, this division has some of the worst luck. Um, it was first attacked by Timoshenko at the Battle of Smolensk, and after that it was so depleted that Zhukov like, decided to choose that to attack, and after that point it was just like everything went downhill. But yes, that's that for the 161st, let's move on. After the 161st, we have the 100, uh, uh, sorry, the 216th Infantry Regiment of the 82nd. 86th Infantry Division. The, uh, the 86th Infantry, Infantry Division was formed in August of 26, 1939, as part of the second wave of formations or draft in Military District 6. It was used in Enfield from uh, June. It was stationed in Enfield from June of 1940 on in a year, and then it was transferred to France for another year. It was then transferred to the Eastern Front to be assigned for the 9th Army. Which is Army Group Center. On November 3rd, 1943, the 86th was disbanded due to heavy casualties. Literally. Um, the division headquarters, supply troops, and units were used to form the 360 um, first infantry division. So everything was essentially moved to the 361st, and remaining members of the 82nd Infantry Division formed Infantry Group Division Group 86, which was subordinated to Corps Detachment E. That's it. That's it for this division. Um, everything else we don't know. Um, this is kind of sad considering the fact that everything bef from 1941 to 19 1943 is unknown, except for the fact that in 1943, November the third, the unit was disbanded. But that is it for the 86th Infantry Division. Um, and let's move on. After the 86th Infantry Division, we have the 459th Infantry Regiment of the 251st Infantry Division. The 251st was formed on the day of the German General Mobilization, which is 26th of August 1939, as part of the 4th wave in the Schleswig area in Military District 9. At this point, it goes on to adding and then disbanding regiments and sometimes even divisions itself, meaning that um, it was first po posted in Germany, to be exact, in West Germany, um, and then it was used to be like a bridgehead for units to come in and out. So essentially, what that meant is that um, what um, the, the unit would raise a unit, it'll be part of the 251st for training purposes, and then it will be moved to another division. That meant it had to raise another division, and then um, uh, so things go like that. There are other times in which units will be coming to transfer this as a bridgeway, and then. 
these units will train and then, or I don't know whatever they're doing because it doesn't say. Um, and then they'll move out from the 251st to join an active combat unit. That will persist in, um, and first in Germany and then in France and then it'll, they'll move to Poland in which they'll be doing the exact same thing. In May of, in May of 1941, the, the 251st will be transferred to East Prussia to participate in Operation Barbarossa. It will be disbanded and then reformed in 1945. Yes. <laughs> That's it. No combat, but it was disbanded and reformed in 1945. 44, my bad. Uh, during this time, I'm pretty sure it did see combat in Moscow, but we don't know anything about it. It's probably used in the rear. Um, that's it. It's probably used in the rear from what sources I do have. And, um, yeah. Um, it would be disbanded and reformed in 1944, and after that point, the, uh, the 251st infantry, um, Infantry Division will be battered in the Warcar Bridgehead in January 1945 and ultimately destroyed during the retreat to East Prussia. In May of 1945, the division was dissolved for the final time. So basically what this meant is that this division was just like transferring units. And when it actually did see combat, um, at that point the German situation was already precarious because it's 1945. That uh, the division played no major role or no major uh, had no major influence in the general scheme of things and it was essentially just destroyed. So that that's it for the 251st Infantry Division. The final unit, well, the final squad that we have is the 22nd Infantry Regiment of the 19th Panzer Division. The division was formed in November of 1940 from the 19th Infantry Division. It gained the 27th Infantry uh, Tank Regiment and a new uh, division was part of Operation Bob Rosso, which began in June 1941. It suffered a lot of casualties already in the first two months, and that one of his three tank battalions has to be disbanded by August of 1941, within essentially the first two months. Along with other operations, it, it fought uh, Veliki Luki against the Soviet 29th Territorial Rifle Corps. The division then participated in the central sector of the Eastern Front, and participated in the Battle of Moscow. Further losses during the defensive operations at Rezhev in the winter of 1941-42 forced the division to disband another tank battalion, reducing it to just one. The 19th Panzer Division remained in the sector, uh, sector until late in 1942, and it was then sent south to support the Italian 8th Army. The division took part in the defensive battle after the collapse of the German 7th Front, Following the encirclement of the 6th Army at Stalingrad, it participated in the unsuccessful German, German off, uh, offensive at the Battle of Kursk, suffering heavy casualties once again. While operating in the Bielograd area, the division was part of the German defensive positions and retreat through Ukraine in late 1943-1944. It was part of the successful escape of the 1st Panzer Army from the Klemensk Polsky Pocket in April 1944. The 19th Panzer Division almost was almost destroyed in the previous defensive battle and in the pocket. It was sent to the Netherlands in, in May of 1944 to be refit. In the aftermath of Operation Bagration, the Soviet offensive net destroyed Army Group Center of the German Eastern Front, the division was sent by rail from the Netherlands back to the Eastern Front as urgently as it came. It took part in the defense of Warsaw and crushing the Polish uprising. After the Soviet Vistula Oder Offensive, which essentially saw German forces pushed back to um, the Zilao Heights at Berlin. The division was pulled back to the southwest by Soviet advance, first towards Breslau and into Czechoslovakia. It eventually surrendered to the Soviet forces in May of 1945, west of Prague. And that wraps it up for um, our enlisted squad history. Have a great day, guys, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. This was a lot of units to be talking about. But once again, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.